You guys all seen the guy on TV uh, for the Paul Mitchell company, the guy with the ponytail beard, sometimes his wife. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Some of you do, maybe some of you don't. Anyway, there's a guy that looks like that. A lot of people think he's Paul Mitchell. He's not. Actually, TMZ, you ever watch that? All right, yeah. They, they don't have a clue. They thought it was Paul Mitchell. They go, oh, there's Paul Mitchell. It's not Paul Mitchell. Now, the story I'm about to tell you is hair history. I mean, it's true. If the guy on TV, and this story has three Pauls in it. I didn't make it up. The guy on TV is J.P., John Paul DeJory. He's not a hairdresser, never was. He was a salesman for Redkin. When, a guy you never heard of, probably, Paul Barry, he was the educator for Redkin, okay? And this guy, J.P., you see on TV, was a salesman. Well, there was another hairstylist named Paul Mitchell. Paul, there was no Paul Mitchell company. There was Paul Mitchell, the hairstylist. What did he do? He was an educator for Wella. He'd go around. So there was Paul Barry and Paul Mitchell. And believe you me, back in the day, like in the 1970s or so, Paul Mitchell, or Paul Barry was his biggest Paul Mitchell. But in 1985, Paul Barry hooked these two people up and they went on, created the Paul Mitchell Company. And since then, you know, Paul Mitchell's name has been all over the place. But he's passed on. He, he died in, a, in a, I, I don't remember what year, but back a long time ago, but not before he got to see his company make over 500 million a year, alright? So, you know, when you understand and know what, I call it hair history now, I mean I've lived through it, I just thought it was current, but now it's not current anymore, it's hair history. It shows Paul Barry, when he was one of the stars, what he would see, you know what the term vendor means? A vendor means somebody who sells you something like scissors or shampoo, at a trade show, and you know, I show International Salon and Spa Expo, this is where 30 or 40,000 hairdressers come in Long Beach, okay? Uh, Paul Barry would see at these big, big, big shows, he would see, if she came up to me and said, I asked her and I'm selling scissors, what do you do? And she says, uh, I'm a student. And then one minute later, she comes up to me and she's, I say, what do you do? And she says, I'm a salon owner. I have 10 people working for me. Bye, sweetheart. I'll see you later. Hi, darling. How are you? <laughs> well, Paul Berry saw that students weren't getting disrespected. Paul Berry saw that if, you know, it was the money thing, right? So a lot of us see things that are wrong. What do we do? Well, it's a bad deal. Not Paul Berry. He created a trade show because he had the clout, he had the wherewithal, all the owners, the manufacturer, you name them, Wella, Redkin, all, it's all L'Oreal now, but whatever. He knows all these people, so almost 20 years ago he started a trade show dedicated to students, dedicated so that you would get information about scissors, shampoo, your tools, your products, so that, and obviously how to create hair. Nico was one of our artists uh, last, uh, at one of our shows. If you were doctors, you would be going to medical conventions. If you were lawyers, you'd be going to legal conventions. If you're hairdressers, the ones of us that understand that we want to make money, we are a profession, we meet each other, we just know each other, you go to trade shows.